Hey, Ranger Nation, it's your boy Jerome, and I am back today with the review for Power Ranger Super Ninja Steel. This is episode number 18, and it's titled Magic Misfire. So, we are literally just two episodes away from the series finale of Power Ranger Super Ninja Steel, which I'm really excited about because it'll take us into getting ready for Beast Morphers. And I did take off last week, I didn't, I did record the Halloween episode, I did a review for it. But I didn't post it because it wasn't really long. It was like five minutes long. And I'm like, I'm not about to post that. Because it wasn't really much the last week's Halloween episode. So I just skipped that and I just came back this week. And then also, I probably will do the same for the Christmas episode. I'm probably not going to review it unless there is something spectacular that happens in the Christmas episode. Then I will review it. So before I even talk about the video, like I said, we're two episodes away from the series finale of Power Ranger Super Ninja Steel. So that means we are gearing up for Power Rangers Beast Morphers in the spring of 2019. And I've heard some rumblings about Power Rangers Beast Morphers that there is a possibility that there could be a super season to Beast Morphers, which I'm hoping that there's not a super season to Beast Morphers. I'm just hoping that we, you know, get a regular season of Power Rangers. I know that it's going to follow the same format of what Power Rangers has been for the last, what, eight years, I think. Yeah, for the last eight years. So there's going to be a 20 episode season and there's going to include two specials which is a halloween and a christmas special when it comes to those christmas and halloween specials i'm not like fond of them i i mean if we go back to like how it used to be with mighty Morphin power rangers and with um power rangers zeo it was those were good how you know mighty Morphin power rangers um lord zed's monster bash or Monster Mad, which I, I can't remember what the name of it is. I have to look at my DVD and see what the name of it is. But that's a good episode. You know, the wedding episode with Z Zed and Rita, that was a good episode. Like, that was a Halloween episode, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, you know, in Power Rangers um, Zeo, the, the Christmas episode for Power Rangers Zeo, that was a good episode. And then we kind of left it off. You know, we didn't do any more Christmas episodes or Halloween episodes up until now. And, you know, for me, they fall flat. They're very corny. So, you know, I'm not a big fan of them. Just give us a straight season. Uh, you know, give us a straight season. And it's okay here and there to input a Halloween episode and a Christmas episode. But each and every year is kind of like being a dead horse with a stick. Just how I feel. And back to Beast Morphers. Like I said, it's going to be a 20-episode season. So, you know, if there is a super season, I hope that they do better than what they've been doing the last few years. It's, you know, because I don't know how they can carry Beast Morphers into a second season. They would have to at least introduce a new Ranger series, you know, a Ranger, a Super Sentai series. So, if they do something like that, I would prefer to be, I would hope it would be something similar to what Power Rangers Turbo was, the Power Rangers in Space. It segued into those and it segued perfectly. And, you know, Power Rangers in Space was an amazing season. So, you know, let's just hope and pray that Beast Morphers is everything that we hope it is. So, without further ado, I'm going to get started with the Alright, so the episode starts out. There are kids in a class and they're practicing magic tricks. So, we do find out that this is one of Preston's magic club. And then Victor and Monty show up in this episode. And, you know, Victor and Monty are there basically because they want to, you know, attract girls with being in magic club. I'm like, okay whatever so then monty you know hypnotizes victor and basically tells him whenever he says chicken he'll turn into a chicken so he snaps his fingers and monty says chicken and monty thinks he's a chicken and you know he starts you know destroying a classroom where the kids are practicing their magic trick and then there's a bee in the classroom flying around and, Mon and monty's trying to get to the bee so then the teacher that is allowing them to use this classroom for you know magic club he comes in there and he sees that the room is completely destroyed and he sees the bee flying around and he tells them you know get that bee out of here and then you know Preston he tries to cast a spell on the bee to put the bee to sleep but instead he puts the teacher to sleep so then principal Hastings walks by the classroom and she sees that it's in disarray and then she notices that the teacher is there asleep so then the teacher wakes up and principal Hastings tells him you know you were asleep while you're in your class so you're fired and Preston, he's looking like, oh my God, what did I do? Like, I got this man fired because of a, a magic trick that I cast and it backfired. So, I felt bad for Preston, you know, because he didn't mean to do what he did. It was just, you know, I mean, it's a small bee. So, how can, how can you put a bee to sleep, though? That's interesting. 
You can't put a bee to sleep without killing it. I hate to say that. All right, so on the Warrior Dome, Tynamon, he goes into Madame Odis's lair. And while he's in Madame Odis's lair, he is basically barking orders at Madame Odis. And Madame Odis takes her mallet, and I'm guessing Madonna must have told her a secret that Madonna found out about Tynamon. So she opens the mask of Tynamon to reveal that there is a smaller version of Tynamon that is piloting what we find out is a robot. So then she takes Tynamon out, and you know, in order for Tynamon to get what he wants from Madame, Od Madame Odious, he has to do what Madame Odious wants him to do. So, and you know, he has to go to Earth and he has to capture Mick. She says, if you capture Mick, then she will gigantify him. And she um, gives him this, I guess it's a mind control thing, a mind control gun, in order to get Mick to come to the Warrior Dome. Because, I mean, Mick is not just gonna come to the Warrior Dome with Tynamon. So, they have to do some kind of trick to get Mick on the Warrior Dome. All right, so back on Earth, the Rangers are outside of the base training and they have the five they have five element stars together and they combine the element stars to create a barricade and then you know once they let the barricade down Preston comes out and Preston is still you know visibly upset about the principal I mean the principal yeah the principal firing the teacher and you know the rangers say well you know let's do a um get a petition started to keep him here so we see the rangers around the school getting you know all the students to sign a petition to keep the teacher so then they have over a hundred something signatures and um, Preston goes up to Principal Hastings to tell Principal Hastings, hey, you know, we did a petition. All the kids in the school signed the petition. Is there any way that you can give the teacher his job back? And Principal Hastings said he fell asleep on the job, so I can't give him his job back. And, you know, Preston just looks defeated at this point. So then, you know, um, Preston says that he will not give up on getting him his job back. So then Redbot calls the Rangers and he says that there's bus camp activity in the city. So then the Rangers head to go find out where the bus camp activity is and Mick goes back towards the base. But then he hears a voice and he sees something and but you know he says is anyone there and then he doesn't see anything or hear anything so he's like maybe I'm just you know imagining things. So then he continues to walk a little further and then we see Tynamon and Tynamon blasts him so it is a mind control thing so so um yeah he blasts him with the device that odious gave him so you like i said it was a mind control thing uh, all right so the buzz came activity it was actually a trap to lure the rangers out so they the rangers find brax and they start to fight brax and then they create that barricade so in the barricade it leaves Brax to fight with Brody and this actually remind me of that episode in Parents Lost Galaxy when Trakina fought Leo that just gave me you know that gave me the vibes of that episode when Trakina was a badass and she fought Leo I was like I watched that episode so many times when I was a kid just looking at Trakina I love Trakina that is my favorite villain of all time I don't care what anybody says Trakina hands down is always gonna be number one in my book no way can anybody tell me that there's anybody else that beats Trakina? I will say Tanaya 7 is a close match for Trakina, but even still, Trakina was the best villain to me. If another ring, if another villain from another series is afraid of Trakina, you know she's bad. Like I said, Power Rangers Lights of the Rescue, the demons were afraid of Trakina. That's why they quote poison Trakina. To this day, I say in Trakina's Revenge that that final monster was not Trakina because I love Trakina. And I just said that that wasn't Trakina. So Trakina, in my personal opinion, is still out there alive. And the Galaxy Rangers have not defeated Trakina. That's all I got to say on that one. So like I said, in the, um, the barricade, Brody is fighting Brax. But Brax ends up getting the best of Brody. And he damages Brody's um, Power Star. So then they go back to the, to the, to the uh, base. And Redbot is in the base. He's saying Mick is not there. But he does look at the um, Power Star and he says it's just like what happened when the Rangers fought the Foxatron. And they were like, well, that's going to take a while for us to get this, you know, this star back in working condition. And again, Mick is not there, so they're not going to have the best time with this one. And then Calvin comes up with a good idea for Preston because he's still down about the teacher getting fired. And Calvin says, you know, maybe we could, we wish that Principal Hastings could be in teacher's shoes and that gives Preston a good idea. 
So what happens is as the secretary was getting ready to leave for the day, Principal Hastings was left behind, stayed behind and she said she would lock up and leave. So Preston puts Principal Hastings to sleep and you know he scatters some she was copying some stuff on the print on the printer and the papers are scattering everywhere and then they take her keys and you got the teacher out there he's packing his stuff up and he's leaving so Haley goes up to him and talks to him and distracts him so they put the keys down and then Haley no pretends like she notices the keys there and he was like oh these are Hastings keys and he was like can you take them to her she's like up oh, look at the time I gotta go so then the teacher goes back into the school and there's principal Hastings sleep and you know he, tr he wakes her up and she was like I was sleep She's like, you know, I made a big mistake. This can happen to anyone. And then she does tell him that Preston, you know, went around to the school getting, you know, people to sign the petition and she gives him his job back. So then we have the Rangers that go back to the base where Red Body is and, and um, Brody. Brody is still trying to fix the Power Star. He's not able to fix the Power Star and, you know, Mick is still not there. And then there's some activity in the city and it's Odious and it's Tynamon. So the rangers go into the city, they intercept um, Tynamon because Odious went back to the warrior dome. So the rangers morph, and also I forgot to mention that Brody, he, when he was still trying to get his power sword to work, he gave Preston the Lionfire Armor Star. So the rangers morph, they start to fight, and then Preston morphs into the Lionfire Armor Blue Ranger, and Levi uses his super, um, his super, what is it called again? Superstar mode. So they blast Tynamon and there's no scratch to him so then after they blast him you know they start they keep fighting with him and then preston and levi grab him and sarah takes her weapon and she you know she blasts the arrow blast she blasts him with it and she hits him in the mask and that's when we reveal that that is a robot and there's a small version of tynamon in that monster in that um, robot's body so then you know little tynamon comes out and madam odious on the warrior dome she agrees to gigantify Tynamon so she gigantifies him the rangers call on the Megazord Tynamon gets the best of them in the Zord so they call on the Lionfire Armor Zord the Lionfire Zord and then they combine it to make the Ultra Zord and they use the final attack from the Ultra Zord to defeat Tynamon okay so after the, everything is said and done that they defeated him Tynamon that is the rangers are back at school and the magic club kids are together and now they need somewhere where they can practice and Preston's like well why don't we just practice here Victor and Monty do not want to do that because I guess it will make them look you know not cool or whatever who cares about Victor and Monty to be quite honest with you so the teacher comes and he's talking to Preston he and he tells Preston that you know Principal Hastings told him what he did about the petition and he tells Preston you know you guys can practice in my class anytime if I fall asleep, wake me up and just make sure that the classroom stays clean. So then, you know, the Rangers are over on the other side there eating their lunch. And Calvin says, this is not my sandwich. He asks Brody what he get. He says chicken. And then Monty, not Monty, but Victor thinks he's a chicken once again. Moving on from that, Redbot, he calls the Rangers to come to the base. So once they get to the base, there is a message from Mick. And he's telling them that his parents are sick. So he's going back to the Lion Galaxy to be with his family to take care of them. So then we go back to the Warrior Dome. Now on the Warrior Dome, Odious is um, working on her, her, her ultimate plan since her device did in fact work. And Madonna is like, but you know, it's so, you, know, it's, you can't make it any bigger. So then she brings in Mick and Mick says that he can make it bigger. So this is leading us into the final battle this is getting ready to lead us into the final battle with madam odious and the series finale of power Rangers super ninja steel so like the video leave your comments subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys later